candid conversations with couples, Mary Tribe 55 plus couples only is a community with conversations designed for mature couples. We open up with a moment of inspiration and today's inspiration is being brought to you by Dr. Legrand Mason. Thank you, sir. Our pleasure to be here. It is a moment in time when we say thank you to those folks that have, those men and women that served in the armed services uh, recently and of course in the past. And we hope our nation and the world gets cleansed and healed from this point on. Thank you so much for that inspiration. Thank you all for joining us. And if this is your first time, I'm Linda Sam, and I'm the creator of this Mary Tribe 55 Couples Only community. And this live stream is our candid conversation with couples. And my co-host is Tony Sam, who is a phenomenal R&B singer who happens to be my husband. <laughs> so now we start every show with a gift of song from him. Take it away, honey. And we're gonna go back to 1974. I don't know how many of y'all was around then, but I sure was. I don't see no arrow. We've been <laughs> married and celebrating our second anniversary by then. Your second? Yeah. Oh, in 1974? In 74. Come on, I mean, you were seven years old in 1974. You, you, you know we're going to be friends. You might be after. Okay. I don't see him. Hold on. Okay. Show says it's starting. Hold on. I think our speakers went over to turn off the Bluetooth. Okay. Step right up, hurry, hurry, before the show begins, my friend. Stand in line, get your tickets, I hope you will attend. It'll only cost you 50 cents to see what life has done to those like you and me. See the man with the broken heart, you see that he is sad. He hurts so bad. So bad. So bad. See the girl who has lost the only love she ever had. There's got to be no sadder show to see. to see. No doubt about it, satisfaction's guaranteed. So let the sad show begin. Hurry, hurry. Step right on in. Get yeah. a to pass it by. Guarantees to make you cry. Let the sad show begin. Step right on in. Can't afford to pass it by. Guaranteed to make you cry. See the man who's been crying for a million years. So many tears. So many tears. See the girl who's collected broken hearts for souvenirs. 
It's more exciting than a one man band. It's the saddest little show in all the land. So let the side show begin. Step right on in. Can't afford to pass it by, guaranteed to make you cry. Let the side show So let the side show begin. Step right on in. Get a force to pass it by. Guaranteed to make you cry. Let the side show begin. Step right on in. Get a force to pass it by. Guaranteed to make you cry. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my dear. <laughs> that was yeah, I heard you. <laughs> and I heard you too, son. <laughs> thank you so much for that wonderful I heard you stuff. too, man. <laughs> this is our eighth conversation in our series today. And have, we have joining us, as I said earlier, Dr. LeGrand and Sonia Mason. Thank you guys so much for being here with us today. Let me give you a brief introduction of our guests. With Gron and Sonia were married as teenagers. She had just graduated from high school and he was a second year struggling college student. In spite of the odds against them, they both stayed in school and went on to obtain their bachelor degrees. After several years as an administrative assistant, Sonia would utilize her degree in Spanish to become a bilingual educator. From there, she went on to earn a master's degree in education and an administrative credential. Sonia worked for LAUSD for 32 years, both in the classroom and in administration until her retirement in 2018. I told, I told LeGrand, I said, I know her. If she worked at LAUSD, I was there walking the halls with, for my son. <laughs> <laughs> So LeGrand spent 10 years in the grocery industry and also worked part-time as a college counselor. He utilized his college degree to go into sales and marketing for nearly 20 years. He would then spend a few years in telecommunication. When the opportunity to return to his roots of counseling, he would earn a bachelor's degree in marriage family counseling and a PhD in clinical psychology. This is why this is such an apropos discussion to have with you guys today. They are the founders of LA Halo, helping Angelino live optimistically, a 501c3 that provided family and relationship enhancement and marriage enrichment. LA Halo hosted the annual Black Marriage Day in Southern California from 2003 to 2014. The program received many commendations locally and nationally for its work in the community. LeGrand and Sonia currently oversee the couple's ministry at TLC, the Liberty Church in Gardena, California, under the pastorship of David Cross. The Masons are both natives of Los Angeles, where they still reside. Married since July of 1972, they have six children, all of whom have college degrees, and eight grandchildren. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Candy Conversation. <laughs> Good job, guys. Thank you. So, Dr. LeGrand, start and tell us, tell us, tell us, please tell us how many years have you guys been married and how, how have you done this so successfully? Well, we've uh... We'll have been married come July 8th uh, for 48 years. You guys look amazing. Thank you. 
And it's just been a tremendous blessing. We're so grateful uh, to God for bringing us to this point. And it has been wonderful, mm -hmm. just wonderful. And um, we continue to do a lot of the things in which we think is really important uh, that we did in the beginning that attracted us to each other from the beginning. So one of the things that we make sure that we do is we date each other still. And before this uh, pandemic, we were going every Wednesday was our date night. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we are trying to be a little bit creative here at home and do something similar to that. But that keeps things young and exciting. Absolutely. And one of the most important things is to realize there's always going to be a change. So when we had our vows, and it says for richer, for poorer, sickness and in health, and was there a third component to that? We experienced all of that. Uh, sickness for the both of us. Uh, we were there. If it wasn't for each other. And, of course, the support of our children and other family members. He, he brought us through it. I mean, we've been healed. And uh, we've gone through the financial crisis. We've had layoffs and, and uh, uh, reduction in pay. I mean, you can name it. That affected us. Uh, having a whole lot of credit card bills, things <laughs> of that nature. Let's get it real. That's, a, that's an, a, a phenomena that goes across the board in America today. Mm -hmm. So we faced all of that. And kind of like the farmer's insurance, uh, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good statement there. So what advice then would you give to newlyweds? We're newlyweds. We've been married since December the 8th, 2019. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. <laughs> what advice would you give us about not having a way out? God not. Uh, the God not. And that's from what, what scripture? Ecclesiastes 6, 4 and 12. Yeah. And you can read that. Okay. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So essentially, when things start getting tough, if we can work it out together and know that we have a spiritual aspect to it, uh, that is one of the components to keeping it together. The other thing is to realize that when you said your I do's, you had, a, you had witnesses that said you would promise to stay together until death part you. And I like to say until there's no more life rather than uh, death. And with that being said, you've made a covenant, not a contract that can expire within a matter of years, but you've made a life covenant that you promised not only to the public or to the witnesses that were there, but God Almighty himself, that you would stay together, even through all of your rough times, all through your bad times, all through your doubts, and all through the situations that can normally make people do that. And it's not to say that you're not going to feel that moment like, we ain't going to make it. Uh, I don't. I don't know. When you but when you think about you made a promise to one another, the chances are going to be much greater that you can stay together, and you make certain that you're willing to work together. That's where the the God knot is. So you you know the strand of two is great, but the third strand holding onto that. And we're not ministers per se. I am not. I wouldn't. That's a job way too tough. I'd rather work in construction with one hammer than to be a pastor at somebody's church, trust me. But uh, marriage is something that requires work. It requires three things, and that is expectation, which is planning for your future, uh, anticipation, but expectation, make certain you're not getting involved with other people's relationship uh, format. We see things on TV, we read things in the magazines, 
look, nobody could be like Ruby D and and uh, um, Ozzy. Ozzy. Ozzy uh, correct. They were one of the phenomena of Hollywood that is still that has not been broken. Their record has not been broken. And I hope that people realize they, they're not going to be like celebrities. They are their own entity and they should stay together based on themselves because somebody else gets divorced. No, that's not it. The other portion of that is participation where you're working together to make certain that you have a relationship in addition to your marriage that becomes stronger. And you keep a friendship. And and look, Mad Daddy, put it on him, Mama. If you can continue to do that and keep each other happy, both physically and mentally, sexually and non-sexually, then you have a wonderful chance of keeping your, your marriage intact, your friendship and your ability to communicate. Absolutely. And what I wanted to also share with our audience is that we're coming to you live from our living room right now due to COVID-19, as you guys are, are doing the same, which I have dubbed her Diana Coronavirus Nisha. <laughs> she is wreaking havoc. <laughs> and so our studio is in Inglewood, and we're just unable to be there, but we pivoted during this time. Because as you said, couples change, marriages change, everything changed. So you have to be able to be flexible and change. And so we created this series as newlyweds to be able to find joy and peace during this time. Because Diana, Corona, Varanisha got people already lined up at the courthouse yeah. trying to get a divorce. And so we felt it was important to continue having these candid conversations around it. And our topic for today is. There is no way out. There is no back door. So now deal with it. Mm -hmm. So exactly. in, just in, from coming from that perspective, how do couples create a pack that closes the back door and that exit mentality? We definitely uh, believe in participating in the marriage marathon as opposed to the divorce dash. Divorce is simply not an option. You will work it out. You just, you're just gonna work it out. Just like they used to do years ago when marriages meant a lot more than just a piece of paper back in the day. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of think along those lines. You. There was, there was a reason you were attracted to each other, fell in love with each other. Uh, get back to that. Discover what that was and do it again, continuously. Rebuild, rekindle, and revitalize. Continuously, over and over. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And remembering, and know, remembering to do things like... Uh, I mean, you've got to have patience. Uh, you have to be forgiving. You can't hold grudges. You have to be forgiving. And that's not always easy because mm -hmm. I know I was a bear for a while. And if I was mad, I would stay mad. <laughs> <laughs> and with maturity and over time and a whole lot of prayer, uh, that has changed drastically. And uh, this. This guy, he's, he's stuck with me forever. This is it. You know, I'm not going anywhere, no matter what you say. Uh, Johnny Taylor put it straight. He says, it's cheaper to keep her. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Hold on to your money. I remember that song. <laughs> yep. Definitely. And so what I'm hearing, it sounds like we need to have an attitude. It's an attitude of gratitude and a willingness to be forgiving. Yes. Continually. Yes. Yes. And also a spirit of asking for forgiveness and apologizing. You have to be willing to do that as well. Now, you guys have an organization that helps with marriage counseling, with marriage therapy. So not, tell us a little bit about that. Okay. So I'm the one that's involved in that. I've 
you know, my credentials are in, in uh, as a psychologist and life coach, relationship coach, uh, establishes a, the ability for people to come when they're sick in their relationship to come to me. Uh, Halo used to provide that. That was a nonprofit organization. Uh, the Center for Family Enrichment, Relationships, Marriage, and Self is my private practice. Uh, it is a for, for profit, but I do work with nonprofit organizations and churches to provide a service on a sliding scale basis. And then sometimes I do pro bono uh, because I want to make certain that couples do stay together and have the opportunity and the resources. I have resources that I extend to. Uh, I also do grief counseling and I do uh, clinical hypnotherapy and neural uh, neuro linguistic programming therapy. Uh, I work with individuals and couples. I work with individuals who are having problems with as a couple. Uh, so that's what C firms, as I uh, refer to it, does provide. And we want to make certain people have an avenue in which to work with. Often in marriages, it's not just that their marriages is having a problem, but the individual is actually having a mental inability to handle the stressors that are around them, whether it's COVID, their job, their society, their outside family, even children can create a problem. Finances can create stresses. Uh, we can go through, all, we can go until your next meeting to talk about what causes stressors and those stressors can actually be the uh, onset of mental illness. Well, you know, mental illness is a whole nother conversation that we as African-American people think that I'm not going to go sit on no couch and tell nobody my problems. Yeah. And that is a place where we, a lot of us need to get an understanding about that. Correct. That it is about, it's not about you sitting on somebody's couch, telling them your business or telling your story. It's about healing yourself yeah. healing Self. from the inside out because mm -hmm. you can't talk you can't talk to your girlfriends about everything you can't talk you have to have an outlet to yeah. someone at least that's when i was sitting on the couch mm -hmm. <laughs> i was happy to sit on mm -hmm. the couch mm -hmm. yeah absolutely because it, it does it provides a relief of, of being able to go inside Correct. I have big. I have a big sister who has a show after this, um, and it's real talk with love. And she's a life coach. Her name is Barbara Perkins, um, and it is amazing how she gets these amazing downloads. She calls them of spirituality to be able to help people through situations. Mm -hmm. so I just wanted to. I know if you're out there, Barbara, I love you. I'll be on your show right after this, but. Um, so since we now know that we have a clear path, because you guys have just expressed to us how there is no out with the strand of three. That, that is just not you and not just me and my husband, but God is in the center of that. What about those who don't have a belief that God is in the center of their marriage? Okay, and that's a, that's a fair question. It's a good idea to make certain that your environment is conducive to your marriage. Hanging out with other couples that have a healthy relationship, having a mentor uh, couple, uh, having a big sister or big brother that you can talk to when the problems, that can be your confidant, not necessarily to take sides with you, but just to allow you to talk about it. Sometimes if you start talking enough you'll find out the problem isn't with your significant other it the problem is to yourself mm -hmm. and i think and i have found that when people start expressing and communicating and they hear themselves they realize hey it's not them it, it, it's me you know i'm the one walking in with a, a matchstick walking into a, a dynamite case. Uh, I'm the one who's got uh, sticky fingers and everything sticks to me. It's not the other person who's in, 
got all the problems or not causing the problems, I contribute to it as well. And as we, as a couple, and within our individuality, and that's the other thing, is that couples have to realize that their significant other has an individualness to them. They are still themselves, and they have to be taught or allowed to be themselves. And the spouse has to allow them to be themselves. I was an only child. I had moments when I would be by myself, be tickled to death to be by myself. I had wonderful parents, but I could fade into my room or fade into the backyard uh, and do what I wanted to do uh, just to have my own outlet. Uh, I was a big sports freak. I love all the sports. I played uh, baseball and football in, in junior high school and high school and, and a, a short stand in college until I broke my wrist. So um, I had an outlet to be by myself. And as my wife and I, when we came together, she didn't understand my wonderful love of sports that I took very seriously. And she used to think there was something wrong with me. You know, she would always say, if sports was a woman, you should have married her. Right? That's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Until I kind of uh, decided one time, I started thinking about it, and I saw him all involved looking at the game, and he'd get so upset if his team lost, and he would be angry and have an attitude, and <laughs> it would just kind of ruin our day, and I would just say, it's just a game. Uh, what's the deal? And uh, finally, I just decided one day, let me see what this is all about. Why is he so into it? Let me try to learn more about it. And it was basketball. And I started asking him all these questions about basketball. Well, well what's a double dribble? Well, what's this and that? And he started explaining and I started watching. And we ended up getting season seats for <laughs> about five years at the seven forum. Years, seven. seven years at the forum. Uh, those were back in the days of Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, mm. And I started watching and getting all involved in it. And we went to one of the games and we're walking back and I was dead silent. The Lakers had lost and I was, I was not a happy camper. It was a Sunday game against the New York <laughs> Knicks. Hey, I hate losing to East Coast teams. And he's, he's, he's walking, we're walking to our car and I'm not saying a word. And he could tell, I was walking fast and he could tell I was not happy. And he's thinking, man, what did I do? And I said, why is she so? And finally, I said, did you see what Riley did? Did you see something? And I started going off on about the game. He said, she's mad about the game. What? What is this? That was validation. I married the, the right woman. <laughs> so are you still are you still like that with, with uh, sports? For me, uh, okay. I've learned that uh, since I'm not making the millions of dollars those guys are making, I do not allow myself to drift back when I was, you know, a kid and or a younger man. Uh, my heart has been repaired once, and I don't want it to be unrepaired. I so I just, I, I'm not happy when when the Lakers lose, but uh, I don't take it half as seriously as I used to. That's true. And you, Sonia, are you still involved? Not as much as I was before, but I'll look at it every now and then. And it doesn't take long for me to kind of get a little bit involved and start peeking at it and trying to figure yeah. things out. She peeks. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. That, but she knows what she's it. looking for. No, mm -hmm. she doesn't have it the way she used to have it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I was, that is so amazing that I was off key to here for a moment because my phone, even though I took it off of, ringing it's over here just vibrating everybody <laughs> where are you we can't find you we can't see you you can't i send out a thousand text messages <laughs> about the show today <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry you guys you'll just have to see it later if it's not there i can't do anything about it right now so we're just having this wonderful conversation and you'll be able to see it later and it is i've tried to express to my friends and family they, I'm not 55. I'm not married. 
I said, I understand that. And I appreciate that. But you can support. Support goes a long way. Absolutely. Supporting couples or where you will one day possibly be. You will be leap years ahead because you would have gotten all this wonderful counseling and instructions and information and candid conversations that when you step into yours, you're going to be a pro. That's right. So I'm setting the, the, the stage for my friends who are not 55 and above, who are not married, my family, my nieces. I know you guys are not married, but this conversation will live on forever. And you'll be able to go back and yeah. watch this and say, my auntie said that in 2020. And here <laughs> it is, I'm dealing with it in 2025. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Nothing changes. It stays the same unless you change it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing and changes so, but the keys of songs. That's true. That is so true. <laughs> and then my that was my thing is how do we, what do we communicate to encourage others to we want to uh, make sure that the couples understand that uh, sometimes just like for single people, sometimes there are some people in your life that need not be, at least not to the, the degree uh, that your relationship may be. Uh, certain couples, that just bring negativity, you don't need that in your life. I had the experience of uh, knowing someone uh, who had recently married and was excited about different little things and someone else that worked there had been married and theirs did not work out. And there was always something negative being said by that person to the other one and uh, she could be a little bit influential. And I would come right behind her and pump her up and say, that was great. That was good. Keep doing that. That's what's going to keep your marriage strong. You need to associate yourself with people who are positive, people who are, are doing it and are committed to each other, staying together and not letting anything get in the way. Those are the people you want to hang out with. You got to be careful about who you hang out with, single or married, but mm -hmm. for the purpose of that relationship, make sure that you are hanging out with other people who are uh, really working toward that relationship and keeping it tight. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't want to hang out. You don't need that negativity in your life. Cut it out. And sometimes it's a little painful to do that. Somebody that you're close with, there's something, but it doesn't mean you don't have to talk to them at all anymore or speak to them, but you don't need to hang out with them and associate with them in that manner where anything of that negativity could rub off on you and your relationship. Positive relationships uh, go across the board whether it's your marriage or you're dating somebody or you're just talking to somebody, it's also inclusive of your family members, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, your neighbors. And we always want to keep a sense of positivity. And as I mentioned earlier about environment, and the environment has to be good to keep yourself growing and healthy. If you're around sick people all the time, you're bound to get sick. If you're around people that are negative, you're bound to become negative as well. And I've always been fortunate enough to have some wonderful friends that were single that always were supporting me as a married friend. And they would mention the fact they wish they had found someone or they had someone that they can actually call their wife, their spouse. Uh, and, and I always found that a compliment. They, Evidently, there was something I was showing that showed some positivity. And they enjoyed being with me. I enjoyed being with them. Spent days having coffee or having a glass of wine with from time to time. It was, it's what life should always be. We're going to have our ups and downs. But it's always great to have a lot more sunshine than darkness. Yeah, 
Absolutely. <laughs> For real. And so people, it, it's amazing how um, we as couples have to always think about the example that we're setting too. People are watching, people are looking, want to find fault, want to try to keep it negative. And it's incumbent upon the couple, like you said, to engage and stay positive, engage and stay positive. And so that's one of the things that I'm taking away that if you put the work and the energy into the relationship, it could last 48 years. <laughs> and you have to understand that sometimes it, uh, you know, you get those lemons thrown at you. Uh, um, and you just have to find the sugar, sweeten it up, and turn that into lemonade and keep it pushing. Maybe Absolutely. somebody give you some ice and make it real nice cold lemonade. <laughs> Ooh. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely work. And if, if there was an adjective that we could give to married couples, what would that one word be to for longevity? I know I'm just ad-libbing to give you more mm -hmm. stuff here, but I just think they're downloading and dropping into my spirit mm -hmm. in terms of of if they could just concentrate on one word, work. What would you, what you, would you give it. for couples? You you already said it. Work. Work. It, it's not easy. Nothing. Nothing gained. Nothing ventured. Nothing yeah. ventured. Nothing gained. Mm -hmm. And right. like an old house or an old car, with a little work, you can restore it. The same with your relationship. And I, when I say relationship, I'm speaking not only to married people, but people that are cohabitating, people that are dating. If it's really worth it to you, you put in the work. Right. And that's that's true because couples that are just cohabitating, just because y'all not married, you still got to put in the work. That's right. And it's, it's, for them, they have an out. Correct. Because they are not married, so they'll be more quickly to say, I'm out of here. But if it's the same concept. You Absolutely. are living together. You are a couple. You still have these, these principles apply to you. And you have to remember that you're a duo, That's not right. a group. You're a duo. You're not a solo act <laughs> anymore. Now you're a duo. You're Martin and Tammy or whoever. Yes, exactly. But you got to remember that you're a duo. You're a team. Yes. Right. Yes. You know, the two became one, and there's that's there's, right. Uh, that's true meaning behind that. That's right. That's right. We're we, a duo, we, right? We enjoy the fact that people want to be together. They want to form a duo, a duet. Uh, Captain and Tennille, you you said it. You know, Tammy and Marvin. Uh, 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 Herb and, uh, Herb and peaches. Peaches, peaches, peaches and Herb. And Herb. Although there have been, what, 12 different peaches since yeah, in the I one know. Herb? <laughs> You're absolutely right. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And he's probably right on the number. It's been a bunch I don't want to hear that one. Oh, my. <laughs> it, and, it was the same one. Fact, that one, one of the most recent ones was a daughter of one of the original, one of the earlier peaches. So, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but nonetheless, we know it. They worked well, and we're not talking about a marriage, we're talking about an entity of a duo that worked right. well together and has had some has longevity. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I mean, I you know, wonder what was one of their great hits that um they did. Oh uh, shucks. Hey, got a CRS moment. Who cool. Peaches and her? Yeah. Reunited. Yes. Yes, reunited is one. Oh, okay. And people, I know, know my music. Yes, indeed. And I'm a youngster, but I know that music. <laughs> but Julie, you know, at this point in the show, we would generally have some Q and A. But I am wanting to give a shout out to this wonderful engineer who is doing our show today, um, Ross Jordan, and on the spot live is recording this for us and editing this and putting that show on today. 
Um, and so I don't even know how we would entertain questions at this point because I didn't ask that first in the beginning. <laughs> so, um, you know, and I don't know what's going on over there in Facebook land because um, everybody's texting me all angry now at this point. But <laughs> I just wanted to say this has been an amazing conversation talking to you guys. And we're building community. Yes, During this COVID-19, what we are doing is building community. We This is our eighth. This is our eighth um, show today. And, and we're going to replay this after, you know, after we get off, we'll replay it and everybody will get to see it. Yes. So tell our audience, how can they get it, uh, in contact with you? If they would like to have their uh, individual session or a couple session sure. with you and your firm, well, we um, we can tell you that even through our church, which is the TLC, uh, the Liberty Church in Gardena, California, with our pastor David Cross, uh, we have couples meetings. We try to do it monthly or quarterly, but uh, they can contact us through that and uh, through an email of. TLC couples at gmail.com. That's TLC couples with an S at gmail.com. And we will keep in touch with you and invite you to come and be a part of one of our couples ministry meetings. And that's for both married and non married couples, couples that are dating, talking, that cohabitating, just, the whole night. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, buddy. <laughs> they used to call it one years ago. They called it uh, what the, uh, the Texas marriage, and then it became the California marriage when folks started getting together like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, but as far as my my uh, my private practice, uh, if you'll call me, I have a toll free number of eight six six. Seven seven three four three zero three. Uh, we can have a brief conversation and perhaps set up another private session, which will be by Zoom at this time. I am only having sessions remotely. Uh, I use Zoom as well as uh, WebEx, and it is confidentially done. So uh, I don't do a cookie cutter. It will be geared toward you. So calling me at 866-773-4303 or locally at 213-867-1915, 213-867-1915. You can text me at that number and we can set up a, a, a session or an appointment for a session and we'll have a brief discussion about what your situation may be, whether it's related to your relationship or you're actually for your own mental health. I'll be more than glad to uh, discuss it with you. As well as C firms, uh, uh, actually, you can send me an email at uh, DRL Mason PhD. That's Dr. L Mason PhD at Gmail. From there, Absolutely. Uh, I have a very lengthy, I'm working on, I have a website and that web page is, is uh, in kind of a flux and it's very long, so I wouldn't be able to tell you, but just email me and text me or call me at that number. And then I will be more than glad to share my, uh, uh, my website information to you. I, I can give it now. It, it's going to be temporary, but it's C-Firm, C- F E R M S dot com. That's C F E R M S dot com. If it's not ready, it will be very, 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 very soon, probably by the end of today's broadcast. Absolutely. And Miss Sonia, is there any women's groups that's online that women can go to? Because we need help. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm not that familiar with what they have going on these days uh, with women's group. Again, uh, the only thing I can really refer to is at TLC, uh, where we have, uh, it's called, uh, uh, woman, is it Woman's Bam. Yes. 
I figure if I hit her in the back of the head, she'll either remember it or I'll hit her so hard she won't remember that I hit her so hard. But it's it's uh, for women. It's a women's group, and it's um, uh, conducted by our first lady, as a matter of fact, uh, Jacqueline, Jacqueline Cross. Cross. And it's wonderful. And uh, it's online? They're Zooming it? Uh, they no, have fine. not yet because we're still working out the different things. We're, we're doing the streaming for uh, regular Sunday service and for also uh, prayer meetings and Bible study and that type of thing. So slowly but surely, we're trying to get everything into that mode since we don't really know how long this is going to last. So that's probably... Hello. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> on the agenda. but. Uh, that's a wonderful group. And there's always such wonderful speakers and things that are always helpful, sometimes health uh, related things, oh, nice. uh, physically as well as, uh, yeah, financial things and experts that come in to help and work with the women. Um, it's, it's a, they touch on a little bit of everything. And it's just right. really such a, a wonderful setting and I would love to invite as many women as anybody that would like to come and associate with that. So and that's the uh, Liberty Church that, in Gardena. Yes. yes under it the is. pastorship of um David Cross. Pastor, Pastor David Cross. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah they're we're, they're scheduled to come on the show as well. Um and that's how I'm so grateful for Barbara Lindsay, I have Barbara's in my life, Barbara Lindsay, Barbara Perkins. And so um, it is, it's been amazing that the community that we're building amongst all of our churches here and all of our funny that when I talked to um, LeGrand, he's a musician and I was sharing with him that that was my prior life to what I'm doing now. 10 years of honoring jazz and blues legends. And he was a bassist. So he know quite a few of the jazz and blues legends that are here watching this show right now. I text quite a few of them as well to chime in. But this whole marriage institution is something that we, during COVID, it's our goal to keep as many couples together as possible. And with your yeah. help and all the other uh, couples that have come on the show's help, people will be able to go back. If you watch Netflix, you watch everything else, That's right. put this on your TV and watch it and get some great candid conversation around staying married. Yeah. And that's the goal with these candid conversations with couples and our married tribe 55 plus is growing. We would love for you to go ahead and Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Mary Tribe 55 Plus Couples Only. Find us on Facebook, like our pages, um, support our pages. You'll get notifications whenever we're live. And again, I just want to say thank you guys so much You're for welcome. taking this hour out of your. Do y'all got some ribs? Can we go? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we didn't do ribs. We, we got a turkey in that we didn't have room to freeze. So I roasted a turkey the other day, and we got to eat it because we need to make ro more room for the next group of food that's going to come in. But <laughs> I know. We, it is Memorial Day, and we want some ribs. Yeah. And we want somebody to invite us, but we can't come and get it. We will send an Uber to go pick it up. <laughs> yeah. We, we are staying hunkered down today <laughs> on Memorial Day. And so we do want some ribs, but. We don't want them that bad that we got to go out <laughs> of the house. Right. And isn't this amazing? We're spending our holiday hunkered down. For lack of a better term, we're hunkered down. We are yeah. closed in. We ain't going nowhere. We're shut in who, <laughs> without who being thought? sick. <laughs> exactly. Who would have thought that this would be what we were dealing with? But I bet you guys have been uh, inspirational to a lot of young folks out there who never seen a married couple and just listening to you guys talking about your how you met and things like that uh 
I'm sure there's young people out there who've never seen, I never saw it. I didn't have a dad. Mom did it all by herself, five kids. And I don't know how she did that, but yeah, amazing woman. Those, yeah, they don't Our make them like that. Had amazing women. But you know what I'm talking about, son. Yes, I do. Uh, yeah, so, and I didn't have any anybody to look at and see, like these young people who are watching this, they see you and they're learning. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. I didn't have any anybody to look at. I didn't know. I got married as a young boy, and I had no idea how a husband was supposed to be because mm -hmm. I'd never seen it. So you guys, I'm sure you've been inspirational to a lot of folks out there. Thank you so well, much. Well, we are hoping that we have been. And fortunately, we were blessed to have parents who were to get there until death parted them. Mm -hmm. And, and my, my wife, who's a baby of six, her surviving uh, brothers and sisters are still married. Uh, they're all oh, married geez. over 50 years. And we're, mm -hmm. trying to, we're trying to get in that realm with them in the, yeah. in the next few years. We will. With the help of sure you will. And, and good help, because I plan to live to be 116. She gave oh, her blessing because okay. you don't want to go that long. So I'm going to have to get married probably about 100. I'm going to find some <laughs> young girl who's going to, you know. More power to you. <laughs> now, 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 now. No, no, no. no. <laughs> some, some young girl in her 90s. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't, I don't know. She's too close to my age. She got to be like about. 75. <laughs> okay, Dr. Lynn, it is time to cut you off because there is no out. There is no out. There is no <laughs> There was only <laughs> one out. <laughs> but it has been great, and I appreciate you, and I definitely would like for us to stay connected. Um, I do a lot of jazz events in, in the community that once we're out of this COVID and we feel comfortable enough to be able to go out and safely distance ourselves, but be able to listen to some live jazz. That's okay. what I'm hoping that our communities will come around and be a part of. Yeah. Yes. And so I thank you guys again for being our, our special guest. And much. thank you, yeah. Ross Jordan from On The Spot Live for, this has been such liberation for me because I've had to, for seven shows, I've been, you see, you, you see me, I'll get close. I'm, I'm working all in the board. And now just to be able to sit back and just have the conversation has been really wonderful. Thank so you. I appreciate you guys again. We Thank everyone you. for watching us. Play it back. You can hear all the information, get all of our contact stuff, and stay involved with us and become part of our community. We're here. Thank we you guys here. for Thank checking you. in and being here with us on Candid Conversation with Couples. You guys Coming have been from great. the Mary Tribe 55 plus community. All right. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I look forward to staying in touch. Thank, Thank you. you. Get some ribs. All right, guys. I'll I know. See, I'll see you at your 100th birthday party, all right? Okay. <laughs> I should be about 120. Then. <laughs> all righty. Take care. Thank you. All right, all guys. Right.